Okay, we are on to page number three in the Paper Dream um, Main Base B, which is the 4x6 size portrait album. So it's this page, page number four. So what you're going to need is two of the Main Base B Part 2. Those two pieces are left over from previous, the two previous pages. And then one of the uh, extra large belly bands that's from page 17 that's also left over from previous page. And then one mini square envelope on page 6, which is right here. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do what I'm going to do is for the main base me a little post-it note there. Since they're both part twos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to um, add the top and bottom flaps so that one of them can be part one. Does that make sense? I think it does. So I'm going to cut one completely out and then I'm going to cut the other one with the extra flaps on it. So I am going to grab my paper trimmer. I just didn't want to waste them and I didn't want another big flap or anything so this is what I decided to do. So I'm just going to cut this one out entirely. And remember I'm using the um, paper line from Prima called Tales of You and Me. And this paper trimmer is a Fiskars Precision Heavy Duty Rotary, I don't know what it's exactly called, but it's something like that. Just so you, just in case you wanted to know. All right, so with this one, I'm just going to cut the long flap off here, like that, and then I am going to I'm going to match up this line right here. Um, I'm going to add an extra half an inch to that line, which. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. So I had it even, I had the uh, this line even with the cutting blade and then I matched up that line with a half an inch more. I, I don't know if that's making sense. All right, let me show you again. So here's this line right here. That's where you're supposed to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up with the where it's going to trim and then it's at six and a half right here so I'm going to scooch it over to seven that line and then I'm going to make my cut so basically all I'm doing is giving myself another half an inch on each side so this side I am going to do the exact same thing but it I can really just go from here so it's on seven so seven and a half make a cut so now I've got my top and bottom flaps so that I can attach it to the other uh, main base B part two. So you can take two main base B part twos and make um, and make a page out of it so you're not being wasteful. So let me move this. And so then all you want to do, of course, is score on those lines. It's a Martha Stewart scoreboard and a Martha Stewart bone folder. I will put uh, links to the other two pages in the description box below and a link to the entire playlist for the Paper Dream just in case you want to go check it out. Um, so here we go, main base part two and part two, right? I also wanted to show you, I'm not, I usually use score tape to do this, but I'm going to show you that you can just use wet glue if you would like. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the wet glue to one side. I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to match up a corner and match it up all the way down. The, one of the advantages to using wet glue and something like this is it gives you a minute to move stuff around if you need to. And then I'm going to do a gentle press. I don't want the glue to come seeping out too, too bad. See, there's a little bit right there, but that's okay. All right, and then I'm going to add the glue to this side. And 
and this is Fabri-Tac by Beacon. And then I'm just going to flip it over, match it up. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Push it down a little bit. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so there's my main base. So I'm going to ink it up with uh, Ranger Archival Ink and Coffee. Just real quick. Okay. So I've already got the um, the white and the black main bases already made. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to add this large, extra, it's actually the extra large belly band. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim this out. I'm trying to use all the pieces that are left over from the other pages that we made. So we're not wasteful. Hmm. I almost, almost didn't get that one. Okay, and then same thing. We just want to score it at those marks. If you wanted a tighter belly band, you cut these things off and just glue it directly down to your page. Just like that. Alright, so then all you have to do is fold those over. I'm going to ink it real quick. Why do I keep doing that? I'm going to ink it real quick. I'm going to use the wet glue on this entire page just so you can see that it can be done, okay? You don't have to have fancy tape. Okay, so I'm thinking I want this to go here, right there. I think that'll look good. So I'm going to put some glue on one side. And I'm going to try to center it. Let's see, how's that look in the camera? Eh, it looks pretty, not too bad. Ooh, I think I might have, might have got it. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna uh, press that down and add glue to the other side. Oops. Flip it over and try to make sure it's straight. Too bad. I like you. I like you. Okay, and then the insert again, of course, they're all three going to be the same since I'm doing three different page styles but with the exact same thing. Um, this is actually the secondary and the top traceable mat for the main base B, right? So that's what all of the inserts have been so far that aren't in an envelope, and it's going to go right here. Doesn't that look cool? I just love, this has been inked, it's an old book page, um, and it's been inked with the same, um, same archival ink and coffee. So that looks good, right? I think it does. And so then the, the next thing we're going to do is the um, small or mini square envelope, which is on page six. Now. I printed it off on the white and black and just cut this off because I can use this, you know, this is, you know, a standard color so I can use these for other projects because these are meant to be used with the 6x6 size or the main base A. So, I did not want to, um, I'm sorry I'm reaching over here, I did not want to print this whole page off onto a eight and a half by 11, a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock that I have um, cut down to eight and a half by 11 because I felt like I would be wasting half of this page because I'm making a four by six instead of a six by six. So here's what I decided to do. And I already made, I, I was testing it out to see if it was gonna work. And so what I do, I use the paper line, which I shouldn't have done. I, I don't know why I keep making these boo-boos. Um, so it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you on a different, um, paper line. So I'm going to show you what I did because I did not want to waste half of this page. So what I ended up doing was 
I made a base template out of the envelope itself, okay? So I just printed it off onto white cardstock and then um, I cut it out, okay? Let me move this. So I'm going to use, let's see, this is Marion Smith's, uh, what is this? Mad Tea Party paper line. It was sitting on here on my, um, on my workspace, so I'm going to use it. It is directional, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, oh well, I'm just going to have to do it. Maybe I'll just do it sideways so then it doesn't matter what the direction is. But that's what I'll do. So here's what I here's what I decided to do. Basically, all you're going to do is lay your template that you carefully cut out onto your pattern paper. And then you want to trace it out entirely. And so then what you want to do is, I have scored this line right here. I did not score any of the other ones, but I scored this one. Um, you want to fold it back on itself and then draw a line there, okay? So that's the only one that you need to score before you, um, before you use it as a template. Oh, I'm trying to be real careful here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see where I sketched it out or I traced it out with the pencil very well. But now all I'm going to do is cut it out. All right, so I have it all cut out, right? So it looks like this. So the next thing to do, the easiest way to make sure everything's gonna line up is because we've got this straight edge here, we know that this is gonna fold over like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, and I'm not gonna score it, I'm just gonna take this piece and I'm gonna match, match it up as best I can with this side right before you know I've got that little knot right there. So, and if I feel like I didn't get it just right, I'm going to take it back, pull it back a little bit, and then I'm going to give it a push. Okay, so now it looks like this, right? So I think, right, that's cool, right? All right, and so this one, this line here, you can score that really easily. You just match it up. And score. And then, of course, these are just half an inches, half an inches. <laughs> so you can, if you want to, you can score it like this, or you can lay it on your board here and score it like this. Okay. Either way will work just fine for this. So Whichever way you feel easiest or most comfortable with. All right, and let's see how I did. Let's see if I got a good... I did. I did pretty good. I did pretty good. I like it. And then, of course, that folds down on itself. Right? And so, I remember, the, before you glue any envelope together and you're going to ink it, you want to do that. If you've got an edge like that, you want to go ahead and do that first. Then, I'm just going to use my Fabri-Tac again to close the envelope up. You need to be careful not to make a mess when you're doing stuff like this with, uh, with Fabri-Tac because I'm really messy with my glue. Okay. So, then we just want to give it a minute. I want to make sure it's good. Right. Okay, see, depending on what paper line you use, see how it cracked just a little bit? Um, and that does not bother me one bit. So then, of course, you want to ink the whole thing up. Right, so it's just as simple as that. So it's the same thing. 
um, as the one I experimented on, and I didn't use a whole sheet of the pretty pattern paper, right? So I think that it's an awesome, awesome solution if you are printing, um, if you're just doing the one layer, right? Um, while we're here, I also wanted to tell you about the the insert. The insert is actually this piece and this piece which is the secondary and traceable template for the actual envelope itself, okay? So here's how you do that. Let me see if I can find another piece of scrapbook paper. Okay, I found another scrap from her paper line. So here's what you wanna do. Um, you just wanna take this. This is for the insert, okay? Um, sorry, I've got glue on my, my finger. I want... Um, I can't decide what I want to be on the cover here. I think I want this on the, or on the front of the insert, I mean. So I'm just gonna eyeball it here. I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so you just lay it down and make sure it's facing the right way before you trace it out. Like that. So that's one part of it, and then don't cut it out yet. Then you want to um, lay this down, trace it out, okay? So now you just want to trim it out. Isn't this paper pretty? I loved this paper line. I don't know if it's still available anymore, but... All right, so you just trim it out. Now do not cut the two pieces apart. Now what you want to do is just score it right on that line there, that pencil line that you made, just like that. And then it folds back on itself and get up. Did I get it on? I did. I need to get a new spongy thing. Right? And so then it fits perfectly inside your little mini square envelope. So, and if you were, if you were, if this was like um, black, like this one, like the insert for this one, if it's all black, see the same thing, same size, um, then you would use the traceable template for the matting of that, okay? So, uber simple. Which is why I like having all my templates right here together, so whatever I'm doing, um, you know, if I wanted to, oh, I want to mat that, then I just grab it, and there it is. All right, so I'm going to put this back in my book, and I'll be right back. Okay, so anyway, so there is the mini square envelope. There was the demonstration of how I did it for the pattern paper, um, instead of printing off on the whole sheet, because I didn't need the diagonal pocket, because that's for the 6x6 six six size, and we're doing a 4 by 6 Okay, so here's the one I'm going to use, and let me move this. Isn't that cute? It's just like a thorn. Okay. Cute paper line. Cute, cute, cute. All right, so then the next thing I want to do is I want to, you know what, the next thing I want to do is add a Velcro dot. Let me find them. They are here somewhere. Here we go. These are... Velcro thin clear fasteners. They're three eighths of an inch, and I got them at Hobby Lobby, three ninety nine, and you get a whole bunch. Fifty six, whole bunch. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to first. I'm going to snip them apart. I don't know why they have to be attached, but they do for some reason. So I think I'm going to put. I think I'm going to stick that to a. So I wanted to do the white one on top here. So I'm just going to stick it right there. Not even paying any attention. I just stuck it over the girl's face. <laughs> That's all right. The girl's face is kind of in a weird spot anywho. So then I'm just going to close it tight. And voila! I'm not even going to worry about color in that. I think it just blends in just fine, right? I think so. Okay, so then what I want to do is I want to attach it. Let me move this. I want to attach this envelope right here. I think it'll look pretty good. So all I'm going to do is, I guess you could make it removable, but um, 
like putting two Velcro dots. Huh, should we do that to make it removable? I mean, why would it, why would we want it to be removable? No, I'm gluing it, I'm gluing it. So I'm just gonna try to stay in the middle here. And then you can decide if you want it to be up or down or in the middle. Um, I'm gonna try in the middle. Mm, no, that's not too bad. It probably doesn't look like it's very centered on camera. I don't know why that is, but let's see, how's that look? That looks, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to give that some time to dry before I mess with it. I'm going to stick my insert right back in there. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do for this page. So now I'm going to get my black and white ones prepared. All right, I got everything. I've got all the mats. I've got the secondary mats, and I got the traceable template that goes on top um, of everything. I've got the belly band on there. Good to go. So I'm just going to start adding... Um, and remember, if you're using soft cardstock like this black cardstock, and you're doing my method where you put the tape on the back to put it in your workbook, um, you need to flip it upside down so that it doesn't tear the paper because it um, it will. And so here, this is the matching color for the um, pattern paper one. So I'm going to attach that here. And, and you know, it really isn't taking me that long to make three different page styles at once because I've already got all my templates, you know, out and ready. Okay, and then the next step is I'm going to add the envelope, I think. Yeah. I'm not putting anything on the back side of this envelope because um, you're not going to see it. Oh boy. Oh, that's not too bad. I didn't do too bad. I've already got my insert inside here because they're all the same, right? And I left the black black blank <laughs> mostly, so you could use like a paint pen or something. And then I've got my mats for the envelopes. I'm gonna go ahead and add those. I'm gonna have to come back um, and add the Velcro for these or let it dry. And then I've got a mat. Whoa, I'm erupting. Ooh, let's put this one on the outside so I can keep an eye on it. Got a mat for there. And then I cut two of them out because I need a mat for the inside. I'm getting all crazy with my glue. like that and then this is my piece that's going to go here it kind of matches a little bit I use my scraps from my um, from my scrapper keeper plastic sleeve and that's going to go right there I am not going to mat this side I'm just going to leave it black and then this piece goes right there. And I'm just getting ready to laugh. My, oh, wow. I did not cut that very well. Holy smokes. That was way off. Oh, well. It happens. Um, I cut one of these. I don't need it. I don't, I'm not, I'm not mad. It goes on the back. I'm not matting that side. So, there you have it. Okay, so then I'm going to flip it over, and then the back side of this is this. So I'm going to, this is a 4 by 6 card. So, oh, I don't have, where's my, oh, I have one right here. Saved. So this is going to go right there. I forgot about that. I'm glad I had one already pre-cut for the inserts. Whoa. goes right there. Just, I just love the way this album is turning out. It's so awesome. I mean, 
it's just, look, it's just, like what? Okay. So there's that one done. And then I'm going to go and do all the mats for this. Everything's already been inked, obviously. And I've been using the same brown ink. Stay right in the middle here. See how quick it goes when you've got everything already made? I mean, it's just super fast. Super, super, super fast. And then that goes there. Like that. Gosh, it looks so cool. I think that envelope might be crooked. And there's the piece for the bottom of the envelope there. And it's already got its insert in there, so looks like that. Oh, looks so good. And then here is the same thing, four by six card. All my envelope pieces were using scraps, and the belly bands were scraps. I didn't point that out, I apologize. Way crooked and way off center. There we go. Yeah, looks good. And then I've got my inserts. One goes right there, and then see so they're already pre ready to go. I've done pre made them. One goes right there. So check that out. So there is the all pattern paper one. There is just using the quarter of an inch one. And then there is the um, using all layers. So cool looking, isn't it? I mean, I'm like totally loving this one. I am going to add the Velcro to the two um, other envelopes. And then that's it. So that's it for this page. If you like this page, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about my Paper Dream printable so far. And I will see you next time. Bye.